enthusiastic introduction nick here ready for a deep dive into this uma 85 x naked gopro setup i'm gonna go through all the build info check out beta flight setup and then share a bunch of little tips and tricks i learned along the way because this was not easy all right so first off i want to give a shout out to uma god for this design that is modding a beta 85 x he did a really amazing job taking a lot of inspiration from the naked gopro facebook page so uh, along this journey i'm gonna have a ton of links in the description and i'm also gonna link to every chapter because this is going to be a little bit of a long video so check out the description to skip ahead if you want to see some specific moments so first overview is why would someone want to make this and what are the pros and cons uh, the main benefit of having a gopro quality camera on such a tiny whoop like this is primarily to get through small spaces obviously i mean this, there's a two inch prop so it doesn't get much smaller than this it's also lightweight very portable you can put it in your bag bring it to events um, and it's not obtrusive like if you're flying around people it's going to be safe you can't really hurt anyone with this and it's quiet um, a lot of the the normal sort of cine whoop the three inch cine whoops with the full gopro on top those are super loud super heavy and very annoying uh, louder than i would say an open prop five inch actually the negatives or the cons of this sort of build durability um, we have the gopro components and the gopro camera pretty exposed much more so than it would be in its original case because this thing's so small you want to avoid flying in high wind or even moderate wind conditions this thing gets pushed around pretty easily and then lastly the build it's not the easiest build. This is actually probably the most challenging build I've ever done as far as an FPV quad because you're kind of taking two different worlds and putting them together. But all in all, I definitely think it's worth the time if this is something you're interested in. Now getting into the parts, as of right now, Beta FPV just released their own ready to fly or nearly ready to fly versions of this. They've kind of caught on to the hype train and are starting to sell pre-built ready to fly they have a 95x which is i think a two and a half inch prop and then the 85x the two inch prop version pre-built and then you can also buy the the stripped down gopro with components with this component here that has the buttons the led basically you if you buy this gopro light camera and one of these two quads you have a ready to fly naked gopro setup which I think for people who don't want to spend a ton of time building and just want to get up and fly is an amazing product. If you do have the ability to build and the interest to build, I would highly recommend Uma God's Uma 85X custom build because for a few reasons. Number one, the center of mass is much lower. With these other sorts of typical builds, the GoPro is vertical, whereas in this case, the board here is is very much protected uh, underneath this carbon here. And then a second reason is Umagod designed these dampeners. These are TPU dampeners to absorb the like minor vibrations from the motor, which helps, which helps any post stabilization that you're gonna do. So if you are gonna build it from scratch, highly, highly recommend just buying a Beta 85X pre-built. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, when, when you start with the Beta 85X, the only thing, the only part from that you're really not going to use is the canopy. So I mistakenly built this pretty much from scratch. I mean, I had an extra flight controller lying around, so I thought, I don't, why do I buy the whole thing? Why don't I just make it myself? And it was a huge pain. Just buy the 85X pre-built and then modify it from there. The other parts are the Umagod custom uh, pieces, which you can purchase from his website or you can download the Thingiverse files and then print yourself. You get uh, this carbon top plate, TPU dampeners, TPU camera mount, this TPU camera mount down here, and I believe that's it. You need a GoPro Hero 6. The Hero 6 is the common, the one that most folks recommend. Here's the remainder of uh, this one here. So GoPro Hero 6, you need a five volt BEC. That's this little guy right here. I'll link to that in the, in the description. This will guarantee you're sending a consistent five volts to the GoPro. You can use a five volt pad on the flight controller, but everyone says don't do it because the video will cut out. It's not a consistent voltage. 
You also need a spare USB-C adapter. I just ripped this off on old USB-C cable. Uh, very easy. And you're only going to use the positive and negative wires. So just rip that off an old USB-C cable that, you, that you're not using. Highly recommended to get ND filters. I'll put a link to this down below. Um, the way I mounted this was, if anyone has any good 3D print files for mounting this, let me know. I just used an old a TPU ring and I actually, I don't have a 3D printer, so I just like shaved it down until it fit and I screwed this uh, ND filter on there. Batteries, I recommend either uh, 453S or 454S. Those are the common combinations. I don't have a 454S. I had some of these 520s lying around and these are also totally fine. I also had some of these lying around 653S. These are also great. It can, it can also run on 2S, but very, very slow. So runs fine on 3S and 4S. I recommend 3S if you're doing uh if you're flying around small areas and then 4S if you want to if you're doing longer flights and bigger spaces. One option here that is currently available that was not available when I was building this was this BEC board that Beta FPV is selling. One cool thing about this is it removes the need for this this thing and it also comes with buttons and an LED uh, indicator so you can you don't need to use the the Go, GoPro comes with a a very fragile ribbon cable so this replaces that the only issue is I don't think it will fit with this design and I heard that Umagod is uh, updating his custom uh, mod kit for that BEC board but nonetheless I'm going to show you how to set it up this way it's actually super easy um, just a couple things to solder and you're you're ready to go. As you can see here, the 85X is flipped upside down into the push configuration. And all you need to do, you flip it upside down, you flip the props upside down, and then there's a little beta flight setup that I'll get into later. So before you start the build and before you start taking apart the GoPro, um, also link in the description for the, for the tutorial I used on how to take apart the GoPro. Before you do that, you want to set your GoPro settings. You want to pair it to your phone. And here on the screen are the GoPro settings I prefer for what I do here. Um, you can shoot 4K or 2.7K. I, I do 2.7 because I don't I don't need that extra resolution. It's just extra work in post. I definitely prefer the flat color profile because I color it in post. Use the um, native white balance as well because I set the white balance in post. But the most important thing is to set the aspect ratio, whether you're shooting 4K or 2.7K, to 4 by 3. I don't recommend shooting 1080 because in, we're going to do some stabilization in post with real steady go and you're going to lose some resolution so may as well upscale it may as well shoot at a higher resolution because it'll give it room to crop with a real steady go and i'll explain that later at the end now we're going to take a look at a wire diagram i put this thing together because there's a ton of very useful info on the naked gopro facebook page i highly recommend checking them out but i wanted to put together a concise wire diagram because there there was just so much information i wanted to put all in one space so the for the most basic setup all you need is you need to save there's a USB-C ribbon cable uh that comes with the gopro and i'll put a link to the full D case video that I use to take apart my GoPro. So you'll save this piece here, the USB-C ribbon cable. I've bent it to the right to so it comes out the back. Bent it to the right and then I put a little double-sided sticky tape so that when I if I un unplug and plug in this USB-C cord it doesn't pull out the uh, ribbon cable, this USB-C ribbon cable. You grab your USB-C ribbon cable, plug in the male adapter as I showed you one of these guys. It just plugs right in and you want to hook up hook it up to the 5 volt BEC as shown and then hook up the 5 volt BEC to your battery leads on your flight controller the only other required thing to solder is this right here this is the auto power on which means whenever you plug in the lipo the GoPro will also turn on this is very important all you need to do is short this hole right here this is your ground and then right here it's the it's the very most top right pad you just want to connect these two and the gopro will auto power on now this this is an option here if you want to have a start stop record button however i would say skip it and that is because the gopro 
comes with voice commands. And this is something uh, I didn't realize until I asked, a, asked someone on the Naked GoPro page, but if you save your ribbon cable, you can kind of see mine. I put a little, uh, I put a little heat chink around it. But if you save your button ribbon cable that comes with the GoPro, it has an LED and start and stop button. If you save that, it plugs in right, right in the back here. You can just use voice commands to start and stop your GoPro, and you don't need to worry about a uh, power switch of any kind. I can show you right here. So let me plug in a light bulb here. Show you the voice commands. First of all. You'll see right there, the red light flash, that means it's on. And then I'll say, GoPro start recording. There you go, so that means it's recording. And I'll say, GoPro stop recording. There you go, stop recording. So, honestly, that's that's my preferred preference. Um, you can set up a physical button, you can set up a button on your radio. I found that to be hit or miss. Um, but there are, you can find those details at the Naked GoPro Facebook page. Uh, so join that group, highly recommended. Couple specific things uh, I had to figure out along the way. Because I'm using the USB-C to power this on, it adds a little bit of thickness to this little stack here. So in order to keep it off, see that, to keep it floating like that, I just added some spacers on each of these little TPU pieces to lift up the quad. It's a little hard to see here, but the GoPro camera ribbon cable plugs in right down here. So I added a little green zip tie to hold it down because that does tend to pop off. One thing I forgot to mention regarding the USB-C connector is uh, you can still connect the GoPro to the GoPro app and change the settings anytime if you just power on the GoPro. Uh, but one nice thing about using the USB-C plug is that you can take that out and then plug in the normal GoPro uh, power cord and then you don't have, you won't be running your whole quad, you won't be running the VTX and wasting power and heat. One more little detail I did, did add some bling in the back there. Um, that's just one of these tiny LEDs. I clipped off the ends so it would fit within the little, the space where there is space for an LED right here. Uh, so the first thing you'll have to do if you do mod an 85X is you'll have to do motor remapping and because there's already been many great videos made on how to do that I'm going to put a link down in the description of a Nick Burns video where he explains how to remap the motors because you'll see that when you try to spin this up motors 1 and 3 are switched and 2 and 4 are switched when you flip this quad upside down. Also when you flip this quad upside down to pusher configuration, you got to make sure to turn the board 180 degrees. Uh, as far as PIDs go, I didn't really do much. I just cranked down the master PIDs. I'm not a great PID tuner, so if anyone has a good PID tune, please drop it down in the comments below. The important thing here <clears throat> is the rates. These are my rates for cinematic flying. Um, it's nice and slow, nice and smooth, so if that's what you're looking for, Give these a try, I'd highly recommend it. One thing I haven't heard anyone talk about but has helped me drastically is I maxed out the motor idle throttle value at 20%. Now this is very important. Do not do this if you plan on doing any inverted maneuvers uh, or any dives. This is simply for like straight ahead, smooth, cinematic shots where you're kind of gliding through obstacles. It really helps give you more throttle resolution because this quad with a GoPro on top is about 25 grams overweight and when a quad is overweight you lose the bottom portion of the throttle that you just you never you never use it to get the quad up in the air so and on top of that if you want to you can also go in the rate section and give yourself a throttle limit so cut the top off I haven't found that necessary um, but if you're in a like a really tight space maybe you're doing like a some real some indoor real estate footage you could crank this down and experiment, you know, anywhere from 90 down to even 50 or something, you know, something that low. So you can experiment with that. And finally, very necessary item in this process is Real Steady Go. This is a great app for post-production stabilization, and it only works if you use the right settings on the GoPro before you fly. And as I mentioned before, check the links in the description. There's a ton of great tutorials on some of the details I did not go over because people have already made them and they're great videos, so check them out. Also, there's a Naked GoPro Facebook page and a link to all of the items to purchase to make this build 
or some of the other Naked GoPro builds. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing and take a look at some of this footage. Thanks a lot.